I'm here to tell you that the pain and hardship that the Trudeau Liberals are causing Canadians is just temporary. That's the new leader of the Conservative Party, Andrew Scheer, taking aim at the Prime Minister he hopes to replace in 2019. Scheer's nail-biter win took many by surprise. John Baird is no stranger to Conservative backrooms. He was one of Stephen Harper's most trusted lieutenants and held several key cabinet positions before leaving politics. So what does he think of the new leader and the challenges the party faces moving forward? I spoke with John Baird earlier. Obviously, you were watching, as everyone was last night. You uh, were one of the very few people who actually predicted that uh, Andrew Scheer was going to win this, but nearly everybody else, the pundits, uh, certainly Maxime Bernier himself, was expecting to win. What happened? I thought Andrew just had the capacity to grow. He could get supporters from all the other candidates to get behind his campaign if he could just be close enough to the front row on the first ballot. And it turns out he was. So how? How did he do that? You know, I think he was a bilingual, mainstream conservative. He was able to get a lot of support within the parliamentary party. I suspect on the last ballot, he probably had 75 or 80 percent of MPs supporting him. And that really matters. Uh, he spoke to uh, uh, the issues that matter to uh, conservatives. I think in many respects, uh, he, uh, he won it on, uh, on policy as a mainstream conservative. You know, I liked a lot of what Maxime Bernier had to say, but I think for some, it, they thought it went too far and it frightened them. Well, his nickname was Mad Max. Too much? <laughs> Probably too much for a lot of uh, people who are literally and figuratively conservative. So, uh, Scheer is talking a lot about unity now, but the party was split in two last night. How does he reach out to all the conservatives who didn't support him? There's a huge difference between those He's going to have a much candidates. easier job, I think, than Maxime would, because Maxime had such a small number of members of parliament supporting him. Uh, he's going to be able to go into caucus tomorrow morning and have the parliamentary caucus behind him. You know, this is a big tent party. He's going to have to bring social conservatives, libertarians, classical liberals, fiscal conservatives, red Tories, all together in one, uh, in one tent. I think he has the capacity to do that. I think people like Andrew. He's likable. Uh, he's popular uh, within uh, the parliamentary party. And he's obviously got good support. And I think that uh, conservatives will uh, come together and uh, you rally behind him. But uh, that's going to be a big priority for him in the, uh, in the early weeks of his tenure as leader. A lot of his support uh, seems to have come from so-called social conservatives. He is one. Uh, he's been clear about being anti-gay marriage, anti-abortion. Uh, um, that's a bit of a change from Stephen Harper. He's called Harper 2.0. But it is a bit of a change. So how, how much of a change do you see that happening? How much of an influence do you see the social conservative movement well, uh, having on him? Look at this. Him? I mean, on his opening day of his campaign, he said he wasn't going to reopen either marriage uh, or the abortion issue. I think that was smart. Uh, obviously, I, I saw on CBC yeah, yesterday Brad Trost bragging that he and Pierre Lemieux's su supporters party, were all uh, instructed uh, not to vote for Andrew Scheer, uh, not to vote on the third ballot. So he certainly doesn't know either those two guys. Uh, but he's anything. also suggesting that now Andrew Scheer owes him because he did get yeah. a good when, when you go three hours before the results are announced, you brag that you told your supporters not to vote for the guy. I don't think he has a lot of leverage. What I think Andrew has said, though, is, is that it's not an illegitimate position for someone, for example, to be pro-life. Before I joined Stephen Harper's team as a candidate and as a member of his cabinet, I asked, would someone with a pro-choice and pro-gay marriage view have a role in your government, have a role in your cabinet? And could I always vote my conscience on issues before the House of Commons? I, couldn't I can't very well ask for uh, the right to do that and say that people of an opposite view don't have that same conscious rights. And I think that's what uh, Andrew was speaking to. He's a mainstream conservative. He's going to focus on what unites us, what brings us together. And a lot of that today is uh, the economy, uh, the fiscal mess created by this government, uh, the huge economic challenges that uh, the country faces. It's interesting, though, because he made a point of saying in his speech last night, Andrew Scheer, that, uh, that we need the ability to debate, to debate any subject, that mm -hmm. he, for example, would cut off federal funding to universities that don't allow debate on even really difficult uh, topics. How then could he not allow that in his party? Because you know there are people in the Absolutely. party who have I've, always wanted to I think, I think bring that forward I think again. How I, can he not reopen that I mean, debate? I don't think a leader of any party can instruct members of parliament what they can and cannot present as private members' bills. I don't think any, can, I don't think any reasonable Canadian wants uh, any federal party leader to you know, lead that type of dictatorial style. And I think that's what uh, Andrew was speaking to. On day one of his campaign, he said he wasn't going to reopen either of those issues. I think that's the right position to have. And I think he's going to show some respect to people who have a different view 
that he does. And, you know, like I said, I think that's, uh, that's uh, good and appropriate. You mentioned uh, Trost, that uh, he was saying that his people shouldn't vote for anyone other than him. But he's also saying today, uh, as are some of the anti-abortion groups, that, uh, that they're kind of old and they are expecting uh, the new leader to listen to their... You know, I, think, I think we're a big tent party. There should be room for red Tories, for social conservatives, economic conservatives like myself, uh, to work uh, in common So you don't cause. see them getting what they want on, you on know abortion? What? I, I, think, I, think, I think he was very clear on day one, and I take him at his word. I also take, you know, I'll reemphasize this. When someone says, I instructed my supporters not to vote for Andrew Scheer, when his, the Trost campaign sent around mean-spirited anti-Scheer uh, emails but during the leadership campaign... But we saw where their campaign. votes went, uh, or well, some I, of I their votes uh, appeared to go. Not a lot of them. Uh, you can see... So you don't think there's anything owed? You I don't, don't see an impact I don't think that. there's anything owed. I think... Uh, he starts out this morning as the leader of the National Conservative Party with a blank slate. He starts out with the ability to unite Conservatives. I think he spoke today about wanting uh, to focus on the issues that unite us all. And I think that's the type of, uh, of leader he's going to be. That's the type of direction he's going to take the party. So if he's won that race, it's uh, the big game now. Yeah, this is the big leagues. I mean, uh, he was Speaker, which is a big, serious job in our parliamentary system. But it's nothing like being the leader of a national party. And he's going to be, uh, you know, tomorrow uh, facing uh, across the aisle Justin Trudeau. And really, Justin Trudeau has had uh, somewhat of an easy ride because he doesn't have, he's had no, not a permanent uh, leader on either the NDP or the Conservatives uh, to face in question period every day. The dynamics will change a lot today. Uh, with this uh, new leader. It'll also change when the New Democrats elect a new leader. Uh, the, it's an entirely new game. It's going to get a lot more interesting. John Baird, thanks so much. Great to be with you.